This is Anna who gave birth. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, a few months ago I put that video up. One of the babies she gave birth to, this is her, Sarah. She's already almost her mom's size. And, uh, treasure. It's treasure from God. And uh, Abel, who was the black little guinea pig you saw, he's in the other room. And uh, this is Haley, another guinea pig I have. As you all know, I am a big time animal lover. There's a few things I have to go over with you. But before I get there, let me show you Anna's son. That's Abel. Okay. I'm going to focus on the three girls for a bit. Stay there, little lady. So cute. All right. They were fighting a little while ago. They're a little calmer now. Um, I want to remind you guys to stay encouraged. Jesus is coming very soon. Okay? I'm getting messages from believers about stuff that's going on. Um, they're seeing more Muslims in their towns as well. About the video I put up, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, they said that I was right. That they're seeing more Muslims. And as it turns out, their local residents are moving out. So people are telling me that their neighborhoods that they grew up in is not looking the same. And it is quite disturbing, but you know it is Bible prophecy. I also had a dream last night that I saw a bunch of men and women walking on a cold ice floor up a hill. And there were people falling and nobody stopped to help them. That reminds me of the scripture that says, Man's heart will wax cold in the last days. They will become lovers of themselves, lovers of the flesh, meaning they will not care about their fellow man. All right, so um, don't be like that. You know, stand up for the cross. I get a lot of messages from self-righteous Christians telling me, you shouldn't speak with such hate. When you are exposing a false prophet or when you're speaking out against a cult of false faith, that is not speaking hate, ladies and gentlemen. You're doing what God says to do in the Bible. That's blowing the trumpet and exposing the darkness. Exposing the, e exposing the evil fruits. Exposing false faiths. Exposing false prophets for the betterment of the body of Christ. Okay? So a few people, those that are sending me these stupid comments about... Uh, don't spread hate when God, you need to look in the Bible and see and read very carefully in the book of Ezekiel also where God says that if he sends you to warn as a watchman on the wall, if he sends you to warn about a false prophet, if someone's in sin or even about a false faith, if he sends you to warn about something, you better do it or the blood of those souls is going to be on your hands. So I'm doing what God says. And if you are attacking me, for doing what God says, you are being in sin because you're causing discord and division among the body of Christ. What I'm doing is for the betterment and to help the body of Christ, especially the babes in Christ. Um, I told you people that I struggle with profanity. And I admit that outright. And I'm giving that struggle to God. And the, I don't say any F words or um, any derogatory words towards the female and male gender. I say penis. That's a clean form. But I notice when I get full of righteous anger, I say B-I-T-C-H or S-H-I-T. And I know it's not right. And I'm trying to stop. And I'm giving that struggle to God. And I've made some progress. Okay? But I'm giving the struggle to God. But at least I can humble myself and admit when I have a struggle. But these self-righteous Christians that are making these stupid comments on my page, they got the nerve to sit there and tell me I'm in sin. But meanwhile, they got loads and loads of sin in their fruit basket. You know what I'm saying? You know, you better take out the beam out your eye before you start go criticizing anybody else. God says to be doers and hearers of the word. So if you're going to judge somebody, judge them with righteous judgment, meaning you better not be practicing sin or that sin in itself before you're going to go out there and, and judge somebody else. I'll give you an example. These self-righteous Christians that make these comments to me, you know, you shouldn't expose false prophets. It's not right. But when God, but what they're saying is not even biblical because in the word, God says we have to expose false prophets and evil. 
evil darkness, evil sin. Um, all the God says in the word that all, uh, everything that's brought in the dark is going to be brought to light. He's going to expose it. Okay. He's going to use his servants to do that. Or sometimes he'll use evil agents to do that. Now, I'll give you an example. This is what these people pull. I'm struggling with the profanity I told you about. So I'll have a self-righteous Christians come on my page and they are struggling with profanity too, except their situation's worse. They're cursing up like a sailor, up and down. Then they got the nerve to tell me I'm in sin, but meanwhile, they're cursing worse than me. That's the point I'm trying to make. They're struggling with sins like I am, but their sins are way more. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is if you're going to judge somebody righteously, you cannot be practicing that same sin. You need to make sure that you are free of not only that sin, but sin totally. So when I judge righteous judgment, I make sure that I confess my sin. I repent of it. I go through the corrections so that could be washed away by the blood of the lamb so that way, when I judge somebody else righteously, I'm completely free of sin at that moment in time. Yes, we do fall on our face, but God is going to lift us up if we humble ourselves and repent the way we should repent. I'm sorry, you guys. They're fighting right now. Oh, boy. Girls, get along. This is Sarah, Haley, and Anna. Get along, ladies. Um, anyway, I am going to get ready to wrap this up, but I just want to remind you all that if you are judging righteous, judge righteous judgment. Okay. Um, God says in the word that if you are going to judge somebody, you cannot be in constant sin. Yeah, we struggle. We have our struggles. We have our burdens that we need to give to the Lord. But before you sit there and judge righteous judgment to anyone, you need to make sure that you don't have any sin or you're not practicing any disobedience to God. So it doesn't mean that when you judge righteous judgment, you know, you turn around and start sinning again. It don't work that way. You got to make every effort not to sin again. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm judging these Christians righteously right now. I've confessed. I repented of my sins. I'm not saying I'm not a sinner. We all are for we all fall short of the glory of God. I'm telling you, constantly confess your sins, repent of it, you know, make every effort not to sin, practice what's right in God's eyes, do not only be doers of the word, no, I'm sorry, do not only be hearers of the word, be doers of the word, live righteous in God, so that way you can be able to judge somebody else righteously based on your own experience. Judging righteously doesn't mean to just judge righteously. It means you are judging people based on your own experience as well. Your own experience that is led by godly wisdom. This here is, is uh, Elijah. Face him this way. It's Elijah. I love animals, you guys. I told you that. He's very calm. He's calm right now. And his buddy Abel, that's, that's Sarah's brother. This is Abel. That's Abel. Okay, my kid is holding Abel. So look, when you judge righteous judgment, it's not for you to um to keep sinning. You can't do that. God says that's why God says people take that scripture out of context that says, "Judge us, ye be judged," but they don't read the whole thing. God is saying in that scripture. That, you know, take the beam out of your eye if you're going to judge somebody else. In other words, if you are a sinner and you constantly live in sin and you're not living righteous for God, you can't judge anybody righteously because you're, you're, you're doing the very same wrong things that they're doing wrong. But, but if you being a sinner like me, okay, you're struggling with sins, but you're making an effort. To live right before God's eyes, that's confessing your sins, repenting of the sins, um, not only repenting of the sins, going through a correction so that it can be washed away by the blood of the lamb, and you're living righteous for God, and you're doing God's word, you're hearing God's word, you're practicing it, you can judge righteous judgment. 
So when you judge righteous judgment, you, you judge based on your personal experience. Why shouldn't this person do that wrong thing? Why? Give them your experience, what you went through, a testimony for Christ. Okay? Led by godly wisdom. This here is my, my bunny justice. Stay here, little girl. I love animals, you guys. I am an animal lover. Every, every, every um, creature God has, even right down on the creepy crawlies, are very valuable. This is justice. So, I didn't expect the video to lead to talk about righteous judgment, but before you sit there and you start making comments about other people's videos, you better make sure you're not in sin. You better make sure you don't have any fruit, evil fruit in your basket, because who are you to judge somebody when you got sin all up and down on you? When you got sin so far up your rear, you can't even see the light of day. And I'm saying this out of love, okay? We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's why we have to live righteous in God's eyes because he cannot be in the presence of sin. So if you judge righteous judgment, do what the scripture says. Judge righteous judgment, meaning you practice what you preach. You constantly confess your sins. You repent. You go through the correction that God will put you through so they can be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. And then you take that experience of confessing your sins, repenting of it, going through correction, what you had to go through, what your experience was like, and you use it as a testimony for the body of Christ when you are judging righteous judgment. I hope this makes sense. And this is a response to those that keep leaving me those comments. I struggle with profanity. You all know that. I used to struggle with worry. I don't struggle with that anymore. My biggest struggle is just the profanity and these two particular words that I told you. And it rises when I get righteously anger, angry. Okay? That's the only thing I struggle with. But it it is very, very annoying. I, I accept correction humbly. But it's very annoying, right? When someone comes to you and they're saying, well, you shouldn't be talking like that. Meanwhile, they're cursing in their sentences. Okay, I admit I got a struggle with profanity. But you got a person cursing worse than me. And they got the nerve to judge me. You want to judge me? Go ahead. You judge righteous judgment. If you're going to sit there and make a comment about my video, you better make sure you're not living in sin. And if you are living in sin, you're confessing no sins, repenting of it. Going through correction so they can be washed away by the blood of the Lamb and using it as a testimony to help the body of Christ and when you are judging righteous judgment. So you practice what you preach. That's what Christ meant in the word judge lest ye be judged. But a lot of Jezebels like to take that out of context and say, well, God said don't judge at all. God said.